Uh, to finish up here, we're just going to do a little bit more with uh, parametric curves and interpreting derivatives. So our first goal is to sketch this curve, and then we're going to understand what the derivative tells us about it. So we have 5 cosine t plus 2 and 3 sine t plus 5. So we need to try to picture what kind of curve this is going to form. And it's going to be helpful to first think about 5 cosine t and 3 sine t without the added uh, constant. So this is just an ellipse with a semi-major axis of 5 and a semi-minor axis of 3. Okay, we have cosine is x, sine is y. Um, so here we have our ellipse. So now let's, and you should have this picture down with this, uh, these x's and y's uh, written down as well. So now let's think about what's going to happen if we add 2 to x and add 5 to y. So all of the x values will increase by 2, and all of the y values are going to increase by 5. So the center is going to increase by 2 and increase by 5, but also every single point is going to increase by 2 and increase by 5. So that's just going to take this whole ellipse and shift it over 2, up 5. So now our new center is at 2, comma 5. And if we draw a line from the center to the edge, that's where the 5 comes in. So what point is this then? This is 2, comma 10. Or sorry. Yeah, it's, uh, sorry, sorry, 7, comma 5. 7, comma 5, because our x value increased. So this is 7 comma 5 over 7 up 5. And then if we go 5 this way, that's going to be negative 3 comma 5, right? And then if we go up, if we go up 3 because our semi-minor axis is 3, that's going to take us to 2 comma 8. And then if we go down 3, that takes us to 2 comma 2. Okay, so then now there's our ellipse with its new shifted center. So stop and think, what's different about these two curves, 5 cosine t plus 2 and 3 sine t plus 5 versus 5 sine t plus 2 and 3 cosine t plus 5, just to review. Take a second to think about that. So just as always, if, it, if we have cosine is x, then that causes a counterclockwise movement. If we have sine is x, that causes a clockwise movement. So let's go back and look at this curve for a second, the 5 cosine t, um, 3 sine t. So we're going to start right here because when cosine is 0, or when t is 0, we have cosines 1. So our x value is going to be 5 times 1 plus 2, which is 7. When t is 0, sine is 0. So we're just going to have 5. So we have a point at 7 comma 5. And then this point is going to go like this, counterclockwise around the elliptical curve. But if we have sine come first, that causes, if sine comes as x, is, is x, then that causes the, uh, the object to go clockwise in the ellipse. But they follow the same path, just different directions. So then there's a different way we can think about which way is this moving, and that is about the rate of change of x and y. And then we can also think about the slope of the curve. So see if you can remember how do we find the, the rate of change of the horizontal, rate of change of the vertical, and the slope. How can we, we should say, find horizontal rate of change, vertical rate of change, and slope. So recall that we can find dx dt and dy dt because if we do dy dt divided by dx dt, where this is our uh, vertical change, with respect to time, and this is our horizontal change with respect to time, then that is going to simplify to dy dx, which is our slope. So let's find dx dt first, our rate of change of x, our horizontal rate of change. The derivative of cosine is negative sine, so we get 5 sine t. The derivative of 2 is 0, so that's our final dx dt. dy dt is going to be 3 times cosine t. The derivative of sine is cosine. So then when we find dy dx, that's going to equal 3 cosine t over negative 5 sine t. So 
horizontal rate of change with respect to time, vertical rate of change with respect to time, actual slope of the curve at any given time. So now we want to do it at pi over 6. So this is where it's going to be good to remember our unit circle. We have negative 5 sine pi over 6. Okay, uh, sine of pi over 6 is equal to 1 half. So this is going to be negative 5 halves. 3 cosine pi over 6. Okay, uh, cosine of pi over 6 is square root 3 over 2. So this is going to be 3 root 3 over 2. So this is our dy dt at t equals pi over 6. This is our dx dt. So we divide them to get dy dx. So we get 3 root 3 over 2 divided by negative 5 over 2. This is dy dx. So then this equals 3 root 3 over 2 times negative 2 over 5. To uh, divide fractions, we take the numerator and multiply it by the reciprocal of the denominator. So then this gives us negative 6 root 3 over... Uh, never mind, let's just cancel these 2's to make this simplification easier on us. So this 2 cancels with this 2. So then we get negative 3 root 3 over 5. Okay, so slope is negative. Now let's talk direction. If dx dt is negative, that means movement is left. If dy dt is positive, that means that the movement is up. Okay, we're moving positively in the y direction, negatively in the x direction, which is causing an overall negative slope. So let's go back and look at the curve now. Okay, so t equals pi over 6. It's going to be somewhere over here. Notice how all of these slopes are negative. If I draw a tangent line, it's a negative sloping tangent line. And the object is moving this way. Okay, so we'll say t equals pi over 6. Okay, it's moving left and up, right? So if it's moving left and up, that means it's following this trajectory. It's moving counterclockwise, as we talked about. But then if we actually draw the slope of the curve, the slope of the curve from here to here is a negative sloping curve. That's a negative, that's a negative sloping line. So that derivative told us the direction this way and this way, and it also told us what the slope of the curve was without actually having to look at the curve. And we can plug in any t value we want, and that'll tell us the horizontal movement, the vertical movement, and then the overall slope, the rise over the run.